What are the five biggest hyperinflations of all time? Prepare to be amazed as you learn about money like you never have before. Money makes the world go round, right? But what happens when it doesn't? What happens when the very fabric of a society, its trust in its currency, is ripped to shreds? Today we're diving deep into the abyss of economic nightmares, hyperinflation. We're counting down the top five hyperinflationary events of all time. Moments when societies teetered on the brink of collapse as their currencies became worthless. You might be surprised because we're about to uncover the devastating impact of unsound money and explore how a decentralized digital future with Bitcoin might just be the solution. Stay tuned. Our journey into the heart of hyperinflation begins in 1944, amidst the ruins of World War II. Greece, a nation ravaged by war, occupied by a brutal regime, found its economy in shambles. The Nazi occupation had drained the nation's resources, leaving its people desperate and its government grasping for solutions. To finance their wartime operations, the occupation forces seized control of the Greek economy, siphoning off resources and leaving the government with a devastating budget deficit. Desperate to keep the country afloat, the Greek government resorted to a dangerous strategy, printing more money. As the printing presses churned out drachmas, the value of each individual unit plummeted. Imagine your life savings, your hard-earned wages suddenly becoming worth a fraction of their value. The food you could once afford now costs ten times as much. The shoes on your feet, a luxury you can no longer afford to replace. This was the harsh reality of hyperinflation in Greece. As the value of the drachma spiraled downward, so too did the lives of everyday Greeks. Savings were wiped out, wages became meaningless, and the cost of goods soared to unimaginable heights. The once mighty drachma, a symbol of Greek pride and economic stability, had become a cruel joke. People were forced to carry stacks of bills just to buy basic necessities, their pockets overflowing with worthless paper. Not only did people go hungry and need even the most basic necessities, Crime spiked and violence escalated. To anyone who scoffs at the importance of economic policies, Greece and the remaining entries on our list should serve as a stark reminder. Shall we proceed? Next up, Germany. Did you think this would be number one? Unfortunately, it is not. And it pales in comparison to the hyperinflation of our top spot. But the Weimar hyperinflation was nonetheless catastrophic for its people. From the ashes of World War I, a new Germany emerged, the Weimar Republic, but its fragile economy was about to face its greatest test. The year was 1921, and Germany was on the precipice of an economic disaster. The seeds of Germany's hyperinflation were sown in the Treaty of Versailles. The German government resorted to the printing press, flooding the market with paper money. The value of the German mark plummeted at an alarming rate. Imagine going to a store to buy some clothes and calculating how much you need to check out for your purchase, only to find that by the time you've gotten to the cashier, the price has increased. There were abundant stories of towers of banknotes used to buy a meagre sandwich for lunch. By November 1923, the price of a loaf of bread had risen from around 160 marks in 1922 to 200 billion marks. Yes, you heard that correctly. The price of bread went from 160 marks to 200 billion marks in about one year. The hyperinflation affected every aspect of daily life, with prices changing several times a day. The wages you earned yesterday for an entire day's work would buy you virtually nothing today. This was the reality for ordinary Germans as the inflationary spiral tightened its grip. Many Germans who had savings in banks saw their life savings wiped out. The seemingly unimportant inflation that the country had witnessed only a few short years before had been disregarded because the economic authorities assured the population that it was only temporary. As the crisis deepened, social unrest grew. The hyperinflation of the Weimar Republic serves as a common reference point for hyperinflation, but history has not one but three tragically larger hyperinflationary events. If you have the stomach to keep going, let's continue. Number three, our journey through the annals of hyperinflation now takes us to Yugoslavia, a nation torn apart by ethnic strife and political turmoil. As the former Yugoslav republics descended into a brutal civil war, the country's economy went into a tailspin. 
culminating in one of the most severe hyperinflationary episodes in history. Imagine a nation on the brink of collapse, its people caught in the crossfire of a senseless war, their lives upended by violence and uncertainty. This was the grim reality in Yugoslavia during the early 1990s, a period marked by bloodshed, displacement and economic devastation. As the Yugoslav Federation unraveled, its constituent republics declared independence, igniting a series of bloody conflicts that would engulf the region for years to come. The war effort placed an enormous strain on the already fragile Yugoslav economy, leading to widespread shortages, soaring unemployment and a collapse in industrial output. To finance the war, the Yugoslav government, led by Slobodan Milosevic, resorted to the printing press, churning out vast quantities of dinars in a desperate attempt to keep the war machine running. But this reckless monetary policy only served to exacerbate the country's economic woes fueling an inflationary spiral that would quickly spiral out of control. This was the harsh reality of hyperinflation in Yugoslavia, where the value of the dinar plummeted at an astonishing rate. Remember how during the Weimar hyperinflation, bread doubled and tripled every few days? In Yugoslavia, the doublings happened every few hours. As the dinar became increasingly worthless, people lost faith in their currency, hoarding goods and resorting to barter as a means of survival. The black market flourished as people sought to bypass the government's price controls, further undermining the formal economy. The images from this era are a testament to the human cost of hyperinflation. Number two. Our exploration of hyperinflation's devastating impact now takes us to Zimbabwe, a nation grappling with the consequences of economic mismanagement, political instability, and a land reform program that would have far-reaching consequences. A nation blessed with abundant natural resources, fertile land, and a proud history, yet brought to its knees by socialism. This was the tragic reality of Zimbabwe more recently that you might realize. This isn't the 1800s or the early 20th century. Zimbabwe's economic catastrophe took place in the late 2000s, a period marked by economic collapse, political repression, censorship of citizens speaking out against the regime, and widespread human suffering. At the heart of Zimbabwe's economic woes lay a complex web of factors, including government corruption, reckless spending, and a controversial land reform program that disrupted agricultural production and sent shockwaves through the economy. In the late 1990s, under the leadership of Robert Mugabe, Zimbabwe embarked on a program of land redistribution, seizing farms from white farmers and redistributing them to black Zimbabweans. A hallmark of Marxism is instigating class warfare, creating an oppressor and oppressed dichotomy, which frequently ends in tragedy. It's like the sadistic child shaking the ant farm in order to stir up violence amongst the otherwise peaceful ants. But in this case, the sadistic child are the statists, those who enforce the edicts of socialism upon the people. While intended to address historical injustices and empower marginalized communities, the land reform program was poorly implemented, leading to a sharp decline in agricultural output. As agricultural production plummeted, so too did Zimbabwe's economy. Exports dwindled, unemployment soared, and foreign investment dried up. Faced with mounting economic pressures, the government resorted to the printing press, flooding the market with Zimbabwean dollars in a desperate attempt to stay afloat. This was the surreal reality of hyperinflation in Zimbabwe, where the value of the Zimbabwean dollar evaporated at an alarming rate. Citizens would work for an entire week only to find out the wages they just spent 80 hours earning couldn't even buy them enough to feed their family a meal. As is the case with the chaotic inflationary spiral, shops raised prices multiple times a day, salaries became meaningless, and savings were wiped out. People lost faith in their currency, resorting to barter and foreign currencies like the US dollar and the South African rand. Zimbabwe is yet another historical reminder of the plague brought upon nations who choose to turn away from empowering the individual and seek a false sense of social justice through socialistic policies. To better understand the scale of the Zimbabwean inflation, one just need look at their units of currency to find single banknotes as large as $100 trillion. While most of the examples from our list are from quite some time ago, Zimbabwe's carnage was experienced by those who are still around today to tell the tale. And the tale they tell is one of warning.
country's woes cannot be solved by a centralized state imbued with the false confidence of a money printer. Number one, our journey through history's worst hyperinflationary events culminates in Hungary, a nation reeling from the devastation of World War II. As the country struggled to rebuild from the ashes of conflict, it was hit by a hyperinflationary storm so severe that it would forever be etched in the annals of economic history. Imagine a nation shattered by war, its infrastructure in ruins, its people grappling with unimaginable loss and hardship. This was the grim reality of Hungary in the immediate aftermath of World War II, a country on its knees, desperate for a fresh start. But as Hungary attempted to rebuild, it was confronted by an economic crisis of unprecedented proportions. The war had decimated the country's industrial base, disrupted agricultural production, and depleted its foreign reserves. The government, desperate to finance reconstruction and appease a war-weary population, resorted to the printing press, setting in motion a chain of events that would lead to the most severe hyperinflationary episode ever recorded. Imagine, if you will, prices doubling every 15 hours, prompting people to rush to the shops, forcing every member of their family to carry every bit of currency they could manage to stuff into bags and suitcases, only to find that what had been their life savings a few short months before was no longer enough to buy even basic necessities. That's like an American today saving $2 million for retirement, and then six months from now only being able to buy enough items at the grocery store for a meal. As the Pengo became increasingly worthless, citizens became skeptical of their leaders' abilities to solve the problem. As all fiat currencies are given value by the amount of faith citizens have in it, how much value does a currency have when no one believes in it anymore? Bartering became commonplace, as did the use of foreign currencies like the US dollar. The black market thrived, further undermining the formal economy. The images from this era are a testament to the human cost of hyperinflation. Elderly pensioners collapsing from exhaustion after queuing for hours for bread, families burning furniture for warmth because they could no longer afford firewood, and children playing with stacks of worthless banknotes. At its peak, Hungary's hyperinflation reached 195% per day. Over the course of this economic era, that culminated in a staggering 41.9 quadrillion percent in July 1946. You heard that right, 41.9 quadrillion percent in a single month. It sounds like a made-up number, but I challenge you to fact-check it. This resulted in the largest denomination of currency ever issued with the 100 quintillion pengo. For reference, it goes millions, billions, quadrillions and then quintillions. While many are unaware of this event, the Hungarian hyperinflation takes the historical crown for the worst inflation ever. At the center of this fiscal holocaust, centrally planned economic decisions and full control by a central power to issue currency by decree and without restriction. This cycle is doomed to repeat, resulting in children crying themselves to sleep, writhing in hunger pains that will ultimately take their life, unless one very critical step happens. Humanity learns from the lessons of the past and chooses to adopt a new system. And there you have it, the five worst hyperinflationary events in history. These events show the devastating impact of unsound money, the fragility of centralized systems, and the human cost of economic mismanagement. But there is hope. In a world where governments and central banks seem intent on repeating the mistakes of the past, Bitcoin emerges as a beacon of hope, a testament to the power of decentralization and the promise of a more stable economic future. Bitcoin, with its fixed supply and decentralized nature, offers a solution to the problem of hyperinflation. If you want to gain a robust understanding of Bitcoin, sound money, and the solutions to everything you just witnessed, consider ordering Bitcoin Evangelism and Parallel by Brian DeMint, available on Amazon and Audible. If you watched all the way to the end of this video to find the seed word for the 100,000 sat Bitcoin wallet, the hidden word is cloth. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more insightful content. There is nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come. And those are the types of ideas we talk about on this channel. Thanks for watching.